Our goal in this tutorial is to give you a broad understanding of how thyristors work. Also, we will not go into the deep details of semiconductor physics or equivalent models. But we will go into the operation of the thyristor enough to understand how the thyristor can be used. Semiconductor component used in power electronic circuits and industrial electronics. A thyristor is sometimes called a silicon controlled rectifier or SCR. To turn on this passive part, a signal must be applied to its gate pin, the controlled part. In fact, by applying the gate signal, we will have a rectifier diode that corresponds to the word rectifier in SCR. In fact, the thyristor circuit symbol is a controllable diode. Unlike the junction diode, which is a two-layer semiconductor device, PN, or the conventional bipolar transistor, which has three layers, PNP or NPN, the thyristor is a four-layer semiconductor device, PNPN, which has three PN junctions. A thyristor junction, like a diode, is a unidirectional device and conducts current in one direction only. But unlike a diode, a thyristor can act as an open circuit switch or a rectifier diode depending on how the signal is applied to its gate. In other words, thyristors can only work in switching mode and are not used for amplification. Along with triax, diax, and single junction transistors, UJTs, the silicon controlled rectifier, or SCR, is one of several power semiconductor components that can operate very quickly to control alternating voltages and currents, such as AC switches. Thyristor structure. The best way to describe the operation of a thyristor is to assume that a thyristor is made of two transistors connected together like a pair of regenerative switches. This figure shows the equivalent circuit of two transistors where the collector current of the NPN transistor directly feeds the base of the PNP transistor. These two connected transistors depend on each other to conduct. In such a way that each transistor takes its current, base emitter, from the current, collector emitter, of another transistor. Therefore, nothing will happen until one of the transistors has a base current. Even if there is an anode cathode voltage. When the anode base of thyristors is negative relative to their cathode, the middle NP junction is forward biased, but the two outer PN junctions are reverse biased, and the thyristor behaves much like a normal diode. Therefore, if the breakpoint of the external connections is exceeded for high voltage values, the thyristor conducts without applying the gate signal. This is a significant negative feature, as thyristors may be inadvertently driven into conduction by overvoltage or high temperature or rapid DV or DT increases. If the anode base is positive relative to the cathode, the outer two PN junctions will be forward biased and the middle NP junction will be reverse biased. Therefore, the direct current is also blocked. If a positive current is injected into the base of the transistor, TR2, the resulting collector current passes through the base of the transistor, TR1. This, in turn, causes the collector current in the transistor, TR1, which increases the base current, TR2. In the OFF state, the thyristor blocks the flow of an AC source in both directions. By turning on the thyristor by applying a positive current to the base of the transistor, TR2, which is called the gate in SCR, the thyristor acts like a normal rectifier diode. The characteristic voltage current, IV, curves related to the operation of a thyristor are shown in this figure. When the thyristor turns on and passes current in the forward direction, positive anode, the gate signal loses control due to the regenerative action of the two internal transistors. In this case, applying any signal or pulse to the gate after initial startup will have no effect because the thyristor is already conducting and fully on. But how to turn off the thyristor? 
When the thyristor turns on and latches, it only cuts current when the voltage source and thus the anode current is completely cut off, or the anode to cathode current is cut off by an external action, e.g. opening the switch. It should come down. Minimum holding current. Since the thyristor turns off after the anode current drops below the minimum holding current, if a sinusoidal AC source is applied to the SCR, it will turn off at near zero values per half cycle, until a trigger pulse during the gate apply, stay off. Since the polarity of the sinusoidal AC voltage changes every half cycle, the thyristor turns off at the 180 degrees angle of the zero crossing point, the positive waveform. This effect is known as natural commutation and is a very important feature. Natural commutation does not occur in thyristors fed from DC sources because the DC source voltage is continuous and unidirectional and other means must be used to turn off the thyristor at the appropriate time. At the beginning of each positive half wave, the SCR turns off. When a pulse is applied to the gate, the SCR turns on and remains on for a positive half cycle. If the thyristor is triggered at the beginning of each half cycle, the load, which is a lamp, will have a positive voltage averaged over a full cycle. By applying the gate command pulse in half cycle, the lamp will be on for a shorter period of time and its light intensity is directly related to the average value of the voltage that is placed on both ends of it. The angle at which the pulse is applied to the gate is called the firing angle of the thyristor. Therefore, we can use the thyristor as a dimmer. Of course, this part is used in other AC power applications such as AC motor speed control, temperature control systems and power regulator circuits. Types of thyristors There are other semiconductor components that fall under the thyristor category and can conduct in both directions. These parts can be turned off with a gate signal. Gate turn off thyristor or GTO, static induction thyristor or SITH, MOS controlled thyristor or MCT, silicon controlled switch or SCS, triode thyristor or TRAC and light activated thyristor or LASCR are different types. Thyristors available in different voltages and currents. Very high powers are used. Conclusion We have seen that the thyristor is basically a half-wave device that conducts only the positive half-wave when the anode is positive, and blocks current like a diode when the anode voltage goes negative, regardless of the gate signal. Silicon-controlled rectifiers, commonly called thyristors, are three-junction semiconductor devices PNPN, that are considered transistors with two internal junctions and can be used to switch large electrical loads. The static characteristics of a thyristor are as follows. Thyristors are semiconductor devices that work only in switching mode. Thyristors are components that work with current, that is, a small gate current controls a larger anode current. Thyristors conduct current only when forward biased and current is applied to the gate. When the thyristor is excited to the ON state, it acts like a rectifier diode. To remain in conduction condition, the anode current must be greater than the holding current. When the thyristor is reverse biased, it blocks the current regardless of the gate current applied. When the thyristor is excited to the ON state, it remains in that state, even when a gate current is not applied to it. Thyristors are high-speed switches, and because they have no moving parts, they can be used in place of electromechanical relays in many circuits. These parts do not have the problems of arcing, 
corrosion and dirt of electromechanical relays. Thyristors can also be used to switch large currents and control a moderate amount of AC load current without much power loss. A good example of thyristor power control is the control of electric lighting, heaters, and motor speed. This educational video is part of the extensive introduction of thyristors. To learn from a beginner to a professional in this field, refer to the comprehensive electronics training on my YouTube channel, The Dange Kid. To learn about other thyristors in a specialized way, watch the video of 10 thyristors and how they work.